Talk about the GOP's efforts to overturn elections. Yeah, so there was a recording that was obtained by Politico. And what it is doing is shedding light on meetings between the GOP, its operatives and grassroots activists. And the two are reportedly coming together to plan to overturn votes in Democratic precincts by installing trained recruits as regular poll workers and putting them in direct contact with party attorneys. This sounds like someone's trying to intimidate voters as far as I'm concerned. And so we have this per political. The plan as outlined by a Republican National Committee staffer in Michigan includes utilizing rules designed to provide political balance among poll workers to install party trained volunteers prepared to challenge voters at Democratic majority polling places. Developing a website to connect those voters to local lawyers and establishing a network of party friendly district attorneys who could intervene to block vote counts at certain precincts. And these recordings, well, they span from the summer of 2021 to May of this year. Yeah, that's right. The GOP is not in any way standing down when it comes to their efforts to overturn lawful elections. And there was an October 5th training and that session was recorded. And there's a gentleman named Matthew Seafried, who's the RNC's election integrity director for Michigan. Well, he can be heard in this recording stressing the importance of getting official designations as poll workers. Now, here he is speaking with GOP activists. We are trying to recruit, truly, it's going to be an army, right? We are going to try to recruit lawyers. We're going to have more lawyers than have ever been recruited because let's be honest, that's where it's going to be fought, right? We're going to have lawyers that work early to build relationships with different judges so that when that happens, we're going to have lawyers that have relationships with the police chiefs in the different areas, with the police officers in the different areas. Legally, it's required to have an equal amount of Republicans to Democrats, right? They at, stack. At, at, at the adjudication computer, and they're supposed to do it at the county Holy, board. Right. Yep. But they don't. Right. Well, that's an effort that we're going to. Right now, we're collecting anybody and everybody that is interested specifically to work the 22 elections. And the reason for that is because we want to submit those names. We want to submit those names early to fill those roles. And then they, they legally, they have to give us the list, right? Like they do. They have to send it out to the county clerks. And, or not the county clerks, the county parties. Um, and if we don't do that, we can foil it. FOIA it, right? Freedom of Information Act, it's to see who are you putting in those roles. And if they don't fill them with our people and we have enough time to do the investigations to make to, to find out is this person really a Republican? And these are going to be the investigations that we do to make sure of that. Um, we will file the lawsuit. Now these recordings of this uh, kind of insidious strategy, it's clear that they are not letting the democratic process play out as it should in terms of voters. And Seafried, he also said that the RNC is gonna hold workshops and equip poll workers with a hotline and a website and also keep them in touch with party attorneys on election day. And in a May 2022 training session, he said he'd achieved a goal of set last winter. That's more than 5,600 individuals signing up to be poll workers. And several days ago, he submitted an initial list of far more than 80 850 names to the Detroit clerk. That's right, he is trying to send his list of poll workers into these democratic precincts and have those poll workers trained and have the equipment and the knowledge to be able to maybe get in the way of people voting in areas where they generally generally tend to vote for the democratic party. Now, when it comes to these poll workers who are on the list, Democrat Janice Winfrey, she serves as Detroit City Clerk. And so she's gonna be bound to pick from the names on the list when it comes to choosing these poll workers. And the list submitted by the party under a local law, it's intended to ensure bipartisan representation of an unbiased team of precinct workers. But it's clear that these GOP operatives are trying to create that biased list. Politico also obtained Zoom tapings of Tim Griffin, this gentleman here, legal counsel of the Amistad Project. Here he is. And the Amistad Project, it's a self-described election integrity group that Rudy Giuliani once portrayed as a partner in the Trump campaign effort to overturn the 2020 election. Now in the recordings, Griffin speaks of building a nationwide network of DAs who are allies and who could stage real time interventions in local election disputes and how to create a legal trap for Winfrey. Listen for yourself. I mentioned this to you guys, but Janice Winfrey is an elected official. So she's probably what's considered a constitutional officer. And you usually don't want to mess with those people. But Lansing needs the ability to take leaders, pick them up when they're not doing their job, take them out of their position. 
set them aside and put somebody in there that will take care of Detroit, will take care of Wayne. I mean, the, the prosecutor in, in Wayne isn't going to prosecute her. The AG Nestle is not going to prosecute her. We're going to all get together from all of our different states in a, a week or two here. And I will bring that question up. I'll, I mean, I'll say, listen, the, you know, there's, there is a hunger in places like Michigan to have a lawsuit that's bearing fruit like the Georgia lawsuit. The state bar associations are controlled by the left. The American Bar Association is controlled by the left. And, and, and she's, she's not just your regular, as you guys know, Democrat AG. She's a, she's a, she, what did, what did Trump say? A bitter, bitter, angry woman or something. That, that's, that's kind of how she comes off. You got to get somebody that's willing to take it. You got to find the right judge and you got to find the right issue. And then there's follow up, right? Because she's not going to hire these people. And that's when I think it opens up the door for a mandamus lawsuit for them to start following the law. And remember, mandamus is that principle that, hey, government, you're not following the law. We're asking for the, the court to issue a mandamus to tell you to follow the law. My thinking is that the people that are trained and get the election experience in 2021 in the primary and in the general, they're going to be in a position to be promoted for 2022. Now, Winfrey won't. Now, all I'm hearing really is that these white men are upset because the system is operating the way it should. And thus he's afraid and just they're afraid and this thought that something's being taken from them as though they are entitled to be in control of every part of leadership and really decide on what they consider to be democratic and right for our nation. Is that your read too, Dina? <laughs> you know, I love what he had to say about bitter, angry women. If we could only be bitter, angry women, because when you take away our you know, right to vote, we will stand up as women. You know, I, as a lawyer, have volunteered actually for voter protection. You know, I did in the last cycle, and there's a lot of lawyers that volunteered up for the DNC. And you don't have to be a lawyer to volunteer as a voter protection person. You could be a poll worker, you could be a poll observer, you can call people and help them be informed of their right to vote. And it was actually overwhelmingly women that I volunteered with. And we were fired up to inform people and protect people of their right to vote, the most sacred thing we have. Here's the good thing is the RNC can make all these plans, but the elections are hyper local. Each county has their own rules, they have their own elected officials, they have their own observers, they have their own workers. So I think that we should start saying not only do we each have to vote, but how about we start volunteering? And we're busy, but you know what? You don't even have to do that much. But if we all give a little bit, because the reason why this is so bad is because sure, great, let the RNC bring volunteers, the DNC brings volunteers also. But they're the ones who said that the election was stolen. We don't want them in charge of our elections. And this is actually an issue that we can do something about. You know, gun control in the first story, we can feel very hopeless because there is such a stalemate in Congress. But each one of us can volunteer in some little way and let them, you know, face this army of people who do believe in elections and do believe our right to vote is important. And we get to just show up and make phone calls as little or as much as we want, and we can make a difference in our own local election. And that's where it actually counts. Absolutely, and using our voice, using our resources. Um, likewise, I've been a poll worker for several years, uh, as well as when I worked at the US Attorney's Office and the Civil Rights Unit. On election day, I would sit available. And so when people would run into issues at polling stations and places, they'd call and report them. And I'd counsel them through it or be able to take a note. And then maybe we'd proceed with prosecution or investigation. There are so many avenues, but it's so incredibly important to protect communities like the Detroit area where they vote Democrat more than 90% of the time. So when you have these GOP trying to infiltrate this and use their powers of persuasion to discourage people from voting Democrat, it's a problem. And you know, as much as they're saying that they aren't trying to make it more difficult for people to vote, check out this slide here. It was presented during Seafried's training sessions and essentially says that the RNC's goal is to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. Although that is clearly not the case, as we know that few people have been found to actually be committing voter fraud unless they were members of the GOP.